First Samuel, 31. last chapter, 31. Okay, I'm going to try and read this without my glasses. Ready? Now, everything that I've just told you, pay attention. Now, across the valley over there, that was also Jewish territory. That's also the tribal allotment of Manasseh across the battle. The hills over there are called the hills of Gilead on the other side. All right? Okay. Now, the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain upon Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Adinabad, and Malkishiao, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor-bearer, and all his men died together that day. And when the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley, and those who were on the other side of the Jordan, saw that, that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. So what happened the next day when the Philistines came to slain to, to, the, to strip the slain, meaning they were looting the dead, mm -hmm. taking booty, mm -hmm. that they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa, cut off his head, mm -hmm. and stripped off his armor, and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim it in the in the temple of their idols and amongst the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of Asterisk, and they fastened his body to the walls of Bethshan. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, the headless bodies of yes. Saul and his sons were hung, okay, mm -hmm. from the walls of Beit Shan. Now, when the inhabitants of Jabash Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and traveled all night. And they, and they took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the walls of Beit Shan, and they came to Jabash and burnt them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarack tree in Jabash and fasted for seven days. Which means they did a commando raid that night and took down the abused bodies of Saul and his sons who were hanging from the walls of Beit Shan. They took them to the other side of the border. They burnt their bodies and scattered their bones so that the Philistines wouldn't come and abuse the, the graves. Okay? That's what happened here. Now we have what's called the payback period. All right? Now, I don't know if any of you, you've, who served in the military? Okay, listen, obviously you haven't been in combat, but guys who served in combat, those who are in combat units, and you should see this, you may have noticed that, that there's this camaraderie, this bonding amongst men, okay, that's very uncommon, okay? It's a bonding amongst comrades in arms that it's sometimes closer than the relationship between a man and a woman, yeah. okay? Now, I'm going to read to you about what happens to David after he receives the news of the deaths of, mm -hmm. of the, the sons of Saul, of Saul, but especially of Jonathan. 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 Right. You ready? Now listen to this. I'm going to read now from 2 Samuel. Second Samuel, first chapter, verse 17. Then David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. And he told them to teach the children of Judah... The Song of the Bow. Indeed, it is written in the book of Joshua. The beauty of Israel is slain on your high places, how the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Goth, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain upon you, nor, fe nor fields of offerings. Do you know that until today, 3,000 years later, that you go upon Mount Gilboa, there is a bald spot that nothing grows? Wow. <clears throat> Ronnie, Second yes. Samuel, I'm sorry, I was writing. 17. 17. For the shield of the mighty is cast away there, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil, from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty. 
The bow of Jonathan did turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of a woman. Wow. It all happened here. So this is Beichan. Ronnie, can I ask you something? Yes.